Today we will discuss topics on how to cope with the aging society. As for the aging, we have to accommodate to the increasing number of older persons. More flexible working hours and paternity leaves are needed to successfully raise budget levels. It needs to be in tandem with、uh, workplace policies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's West East Talk. I'm Du Peng, Vice President of Renmin University of China, and also the host for today's discussion. By the end of 2021, China's population aged 65 and above reached 200 million, accounting for more than 14.2 percent of the whole population. Marking that China has entered a moderately aging society, the aging population and the low birth rate are common challenges faced by China, Japan, and Korea, greatly influencing the social and economic sustainable development in the three countries. Today, we will discuss. Topics on how to cope with the aging societies. Joining us today are Dr. Riko Hayashi, Deputy Director General of Japan's National Institute of Population and Social Security Research, Professor Kim Yiki, Director of China Institute, and a former professor of the Department of Sociology at Dongguo University in the Korea, and Professor Stuart Gitao Biston. Visiting researcher of Erasmus University and the Netherlands Interdisciplinary De- Demographic Institute, professor of social science and public policy, and the director of Center for Aging Studies at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Now in China, there are worries and concerns caused by higher dependency ratio and a weaker economic driving force. So during the transition, scientific judgment and advanced arrangement are necessary for the adjustment and the demographic policies and the upgrading of supporting facilities. What can China learn from Japan and Korea in this aspect? It is not the number of population which determines, but it is the policy to maximize of people. And then the number of people, whether it is increasing or decreasing, so that is how the po- the, the the policy which use much use good use of the existing people will count more than only the number of people. And as for the aging, we have to accommodate to the increasing number of older persons. The Korean society has undergone the main process of. Demographic transition since the early 1960s, the birth rate and mortality rate start to decline. This transformation has occurred under the influence of socio-economic factors such as modernization, socio-economic development, urbanization, and national family planning policies. In Korea, since 1996, Korean government has changed the direction of family planning from fertility control to fertility promotion. However, this adjustment seems to be too late, as I mentioned before. Both Japan and Korea's fertility promotion policies have not succeeded in raising fertility levels. In the census, China's low fertility may not hinder future prosperity. Published on academic journal PNAS, Professor Biston,、uh, along with other two scholars. Hold the view that when associated with rapid increases in human capital, low fertility rates may not pose such a significant obstacle to continued development over the coming decades. So, would you like to briefly tell us how you come to this conclusion, please? Yeah. So this is based upon the. The concept which Wolfgang Lutz calls demographic metabolism, which is that you can have a society, but if that society is also better educated, better skilled, and if those improvements in human capital can be translated 
into improved productivity, then that change, that human capital shift can offset the demographic shift. Just about adapting to these uh, to this new demographic reality, releasing the full potential of the people in your society, rather than just creating and asking for more people, more and more people. Global responses to tackle low fertility can be largely categorized into three aspects. Uh, time supports by providing maternity and uh, uh, paternal uh, leaves. Uh, economic supports by offering uh, subsidies and a tax cut. And uh, service supports by giving child care. So from your experience, uh, what kinds of measures are mo most effective uh, based on the experience uh, of Japan, Korea, or maybe uh, even Western Europe. So what's your uh, suggest? Uh, what, what's the young parents really want uh, for them, the most helpful way for them? For example, Japanese, especially men, works too, uh, too hard. So we have been trying to do this work style reform, and to some extent it was um, effective but the biggest effect was COVID-19. Because of COVID-19, we could not go to the, the offices. And all of a sudden, the proportion of people who are doing remote work increased so sharply, especially for 2021. But now I see many marriages coming out or increase of the number of marriages. So if the telework, the remote work and flexible work style will continue to be in our culture, then I think this will be the best effect for creating a better environment for young people. In addition to, of course, maternity or paternity leaves, economic supports such as family child allowances is important. Actually, Korean government copied the Nordic countries like Finland and Netherlands, work family balance policies, but actually anyway, Korean government has failed to provide sufficient benefits for working women. In addition, unlike Nordic countries, the Korean government did not provide a practical environment for Korean men. More flexible working hours and paternity leaves are needed to successfully raise fertility levels. Uh, this is what young parents really want in Korea. It needs to be in tandem with um, workplace policies, providing a better uh, workplace environment, but then also within the family. And that's why I think you can say that low fertility or these very low fertility rates are, rather than being a problem in and of themselves, they're actually a, a symptom of other problems in society. If you have to look after not only your children but you and your partner as well, but then you also have got to look after uh, your parents and maybe even your partner's parents as well, well, then the burden is, is going to be far too high. So you know, it, it may well be that if the government really wants to support childbearing, ironically, may have to invest in elder care to remove a, another burden from the, uh, from the shoulders of working age people. That's uh, also hot topic in China to discuss about the retirement age uh, delay. Meanwhile, Japan and Korea are also facing the same challenge. So how can the entire society reach a consensus on delaying the retirement age from your experience? And how should a supporting sy system be formulated? For example, in the UK, um, the 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 link between retirement and pension is now pretty much gone that there is no retirement age that, that your company cannot force you to leave cannot kick you out age 60 or 65 or whatever it is unless there's some very specific justifiable reason for that now that is different to the pension age the pension age is still fixed so you can choose to retire. You can choose to leave your work, but you may not be able to claim your pension until that particular age. And so that prevents people 
um, from being forced out of work before they uh, before they really want it. And I think that and when people say, oh, well, no, but this takes jobs away from younger people, right? That having pe- people working until the late 60s, 70s is going to increase youth unemployment. Well, there's not a lot of evidence that that, that that is actually the case, because, again, we think about the different kinds of jobs which people across the life course are doing. We have to distinguish two different things. One is retirement age, the other is pensionable age. In Japan, we've been increasing, we are now in the in the process of increasing the pensionable age from 60 to 65. But we decided not to delay it any further because it is important to keep the pension system sustainable and so that people will trust it. And then we, will, we are going to receive more amount of pension if you delay it. As for the retirement age, we have to make it flexible so that there will be more um, flexible work um, market for the later years. And maybe we can have the first work style, first work life from 20s to the 50. And then for the first work age, maybe we get married, we have children, and then at the age of 50, maybe the children become old enough. And the second work life, it will start from 50, so that you can have a new gain of experiences, so that you can work much later than 60 or 70. You can, you can think about working until 80 years old or until 100 years. So. Um, this kind of retirement age is the key to create the new society or the age society. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks to all the guests for sharing today and also to those who are watching. See you next time.